Kawa with the news making headlines around the world. His Highness the Emir patronizes and attends the 14th edition of His Highness Sheikh Salem Al Ali Subah Informatics Award. The Ministry of Interior is working on generating more cooperation on Arab and international levels to combat terrorism and destructive thoughts. Kuwait supports the Palestinian initiative of presenting the Arab draft resolution at the UN Security Council. And Kurdish forces launch an operation to retake the town of Sinjar in northwestern Iraq. In our first item, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah al-Ahmed al-Jabir al-Subah patronized and attended the ceremony held this morning at Bayan Palace to honor the winners of the 14th edition of His Highness Sheikh Salem al-Ali Subah Informatics Award. His Highness the Emir was received at the avenue by head of the awards board of trustees, Sheikh Aida Salem al-Ali Subah, and members of the organizing committee. The ceremony was attended by His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf al-Ahmed al-Jabir al-Subah, the National Assembly Speaker Marzouk Ali al-Ghanim, former National Assembly Speaker Jassim Mohammed al-Khrafi, Sheikh His Highness Sheikh Nasser al-Mohammed al-Ahmed al-Subah, His Highness Sheikh Jabir al-Mubarak al-Hamad al-Subah, the Prime Minister, the First Deputy Premier and Foreign Minister Sheikh Subah al-Khalid al-Hamad al-Subah, the Deputy Minister of the Amiri Diwan Affairs Sheikh Ali Jarrah al-Subah, and senior state officials. The national anthem was played at the outset of the ceremony, followed by a recitation from the Holy Quran, and then Sheikh Haida gave a speech in which she highlighted the importance of the award in building a society of knowledge and creativity, as well as in elevating the name of Kuwait High. She also expressed gratitude for His Highness the Emir's patronage of the award and voiced pride of the recent UN honoring and proclamation of His Highness the Emir as a humanitarian leader and of Kuwait as a humanitarian center. Afterwards, a documentary about the UN honoring of His Highness the Emir was screened. Member of the awards higher organizing committee, engineer Hassan Al Hamadi, said, "This award is keen on delivering its mission of encouraging creativity and excellence in information technology, adding that it is playing an important role in the development of society and spreading of knowledge." He noted that among the winners of this edition is the American engineer Stephen J. Sasson, who invented the digital camera in 1975. For his part, Sassan voiced appreciation of Kuwait, His Highness the Emir and the awards organizing committee for honoring him. Organizing committee member engineer Bassem Shimmeri also delivered a speech highlighting the main stages in the history of the award and its development. Then His Highness the Emir handed the winners their awards and wished them more success. Finally, the event concluded with presenting a commemorative gift to His Highness the Emir on this occasion. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received this morning at Bayan Palace His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah. His Highness the Emir then received His Highness Sheikh Jabir Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister. His Highness the Emir also received the First Deputy Premier and Foreign Minister Sheikh Subah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. And finally, His Highness the Emir received Governor of the Central Bank of Kuwait Dr. Muhammad Yusuf Al Hashil. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received today noon at Bayan Palace members of the Board of Trustees and officials of the Journey of Hope. 
The meeting was attended by His Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah, and His Highness Sheikh Jaber Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister. His Highness the Emir lauded the efforts exerted by officials of the journey that carries an international humanitarian message for people with special needs, a matter that reflects great keenness on caring for, the, for this category and developing their capabilities. The Board of Trustees Secretary and Executive Director of the Journey, Yusuf Abdel Hamid Al Jassim, voiced a deep gratitude and appreciation to His Highness the Emir over his continuous support and noble directives. Also attending the meeting was Deputy Minister of the Emiri Diwan Affairs, Sheikh Ali Jarrah Al Subah. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Jigni Khesar Namjil Wangchak of the Kingdom of Bhutan on the occasion of his country's National Day. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Jigni Khesar Negmal Wangchak of the Kingdom of Bhutan on the occasion of his country's National Day. And His Highness the Prime Minister Sheikh Jabal Lambarak Al Hamad Al Subah also sent a similar cable. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah received a cable of congratulations from His Excellency the President of the Philippines, Benino Aquino III, on naming His Highness the Emir a humanitarian leader by the United Nations. On his part, His Highness the Emir sent a reply cable to His Excellency the President of the Philippines, expressing gratitude for his warm greetings that reflect great bilateral ties and wished him the best of health and the Filipino people more progress and prosperity. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah received this morning at Bayan Palace His Highness Sheikh Jaber Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister. His Highness the Crown Prince then received the first Deputy Premier and Foreign Minister Sheikh Subah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. His Highness the Crown Prince also received the Deputy Premier and Minister of Interior Sheikh Mohammed Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. And finally, His Highness the Crown Prince received the Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense, Sheikh Khalid Al Jarrah Al Subah. In continuation of yesterday's meeting, the National Assembly held a session this morning under the chairmanship of Speaker Merzouk Ali Al-Ghanem. During the meeting, the National Assembly approved the public prosecution's request to revoke the parliamentary immunity of MPs Dr. Abdel Hamid Dashti and Nabil Al-Fadl. Meanwhile, the Minister of State for Housing Affairs, Yasser Abul, announced that the Ministry allocated a number of residential apartments in the Western Sulabi Khat project for the current residents of Al Sawabar area, noting that they will be able to move to their new flats next February. The National Assembly was then briefed by the Minister of Electricity and Water and Minister of Public Works, Abdel Aziz Ibrahim, on the development projects due to be implemented. Finally, Speaker Aghanem adjourned the session to be continued tomorrow, Thursday, to resume discussing the topics listed on the Parliament's agenda. The Ministry of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs announces in a press conference the names of the winners of Kuwait's 18th completion of memorizing the Holy Quran. The press conference, which witnessed calling the winners live for the first time, was attended by members of the competition committee as well as media members and journalists. Heb Abdel Rahman has more in the following report. Minister of Justice and Minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs, Ya'qub al-Sana, said that Kuwait is distinctive in the Muslim world in competitions of memorizing the Holy Quran and pioneer in the conservation of the Quran. 
in a press conference to adopt the results of the final qualifying great competition. He said that the competition, which came under the auspices of His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah, women have a privileged position in this superiority as the women won the first ranks, praising the role of women, which proved efficiency in the Kuwaiti society. Well, it is my pleasure now to, uh, to announce the uh, results of the uh, people who memorize Quran Kareem, the whole Quran or 25 parts or 20 or 15 or 10, and also five and one and, f and four, the youth and the uh, men and the women. Alhamdulillah, thank God that we have uh, one 163 competitor who won the trophy of reciting Quran Kareem. And Alhamdulillah, this indicates the importance of Quran Kareem in our life and indicates the, uh, uh, the, the attention that the country pay, uh, pay for this and which uh, is uh, in, uh, during the presence of uh, the, the highness the Amir. The number of agencies participated in the competition is 32, varied between civil and governmental, and the total number of winners of the competition reached 163, including 69 men and boys, 73 winners from women and girls, 16 winners from the people with special needs, along with 5 winners from correctional institutions. The number of recipients of the final score was 8 winners from women and girls. The Ministry of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs got the title of the superiority year after gaining 250 points. The Silver Shield was awarded to Bayadir Peace Women's Society for gaining 5.45 points, while the Social Reform Society Shield got the bronze for gaining 5.41 points. After almost two weeks of the continuous competitions and rounds among the contesters, Kuwait 18th competition for memorizing the Holy Quran has come to its end with the announcing of the names of its winners. From the headquarters of Kuwait al Foundation in Desma area, I am Heb Abdurrahman reporting for English News. The Deputy Minister of the Emiri Diwan Affairs, Sheikh Ali Jarrah al Subah, paid a visit to the Embassy of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in Kuwait to commemorate the third anniversary of the passing away of former leader Kim Jong il. Sheikh Ali Jarrah conveyed condolences of His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah, His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah, and His Highness Sheikh Jabir Al Mubarak Al Ahmed Al Subah, the Prime Minister. The Deputy Premier and Minister of Interior, Sheikh Mohammed Khal Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah, stressed today that the Ministry is working on generating more cooperation and coordination on Gulf, Arab, and international levels to combat terrorism and destructive thoughts and their negative impacts on the youth. The Security Media Department declared in a press statement that Sheikh Mohammed Al Khalid said the State of Kuwait contributed in supporting the efforts of the Interpol and human rights organizations in implementing international pacts and agreements in line with preserving security and stability worldwide. On the occasion of marking the Police Day due December the 18th, Sheikh Mohammed Al Khalid expressed gratitude for all personnel of the Interior Ministry over their dedicated efforts and extended sincere greetings to the noble higher leadership represented in His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah, His Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah, and His Highness Sheikh Jabir Al Mubarak Al Ahmed Al Subah, the Prime Minister. As the Palestinians are still determined to present the Arab draft resolution at the UN Security Council, Kuwait's permanent representative to the Arab League, Aziz al-Dehani, said that Kuwait is keen on supporting the Arab state's efforts in all international arenas, especially those related to the Palestinian cause. The remarks came as the European Parliament planned to vote on a compromise resolution linking rec recognition of a Palestinian state to a resumption of negotiations towards a settlement. Fatma Abdel Karim from Ramallah has the details. Two resolutions will be presented to the United Nations Security Council. One is the French Palestinian resolution, which is due today, according to senior officials. The second 
is the Arab-backed draft resolution which is expected to be presented this week also, despite pressures by Israel and the United States to hold back. However, the Palestinian leadership said it is determined to push through the process regardless of the threats. This is a decision taken at the highest level. Uh, the Palestinian leadership, supported by the uh, Arab League uh, follow-up committee on the peace negotiations. Uh, foreign ministers reiterated their support some two weeks ago for the draft resolution that was worked out with the various regional groupings, including the 15 members of the Security Council. Senior Palestinian officials said U.S. State Secretary John Kerry said his administration will veto the resolution in the case it goes to voting. The American administration is trying to halt the process before it gets to voting, according to observers. It's clear that they are going to veto the draft resolution, but at the same time they are embarrassed to do so simply because the language of the uh, resolution is, uh, has come from the heart of the American foreign policy. Uh, and I doubt that the Americans would uh, impose sanctions on the Palestinians simply because they have interest on uh, the Palestinian uh, authority being stable. The increasing pressures by both the Europeans and the Arabs come as Israel prepares for general elections in March, which is likely to add complications before any decision is taken by the United Nations or even any steps to be taken by Israel. To the Palestinian leadership, the more important aspect is setting a time frame that obligates Israel to end its occupation over the Palestinian territories in November 2016. However, observers believe the process could witness complications which may lead to changing this deadline. Fatma Abdel Karim, Kuwait TV, Ramallah, Palestine. Kurdish security officials said that Kurdish forces launched an operation to retake the town of Sinjar in northwestern Iraq today after heavy coalition airstrikes on Islamic State positions in the area overnight. Iraqi Kurds intensified calls for the United States to deliver heavy weapons to the Kurdish Peshmerga forces to be able to push back the IS militants. After meeting with a delegation from U.S. Congress, Kurdistan Region Prime Minister Nashirvan Barazani admitted that the U.S. military support and intervention with airstrikes has impacted the situation in stopping the advancement of the IS insurgents in northern Iraq as well as in the besieged Kurdish city of Kobani in Syrian Kurdistan close to the Turkish border. And to Afghanistan where Taliban insurgents stormed a bank in the country's restive southern province of Helmand today killing at least 10 people including three policemen. Authorities said that five suicide bombers raided the branch of the new Kabul Bank in the provincial capital Lashkargah. Earlier, the head doctor at Lashkargah Hospital said that more than 20 people with gunshot wounds had been admitted, as well as five bodies. The attack came a day after members of the Pakistani Taliban attacked an army-run school in Peshawar, murdering more than 141 people. Moving to the local financial news, where the three main indices of Kuwait Stock Exchange were still red by the end of today's trading session, with the price index dropping by 55 points to reach 6,115 points. The KSX 15 index also lost 11 points and settled at the level of 700 or 972 points. The share of the contracting and marine services company was the top gainer of the day, while that of the Pearl of Kuwait real estate company suffered the biggest loss. And in our final item tonight, the annual Pink Friday Walkathon returned for the fourth year this weekend as many gathered to participate in the growing anti bullying event. Organized by Equate, the event seeks to shed light on bullying, specifically in Kuwait schools, and spread awareness on the damage the act brings. Reporter Badria Saleh was there and brings us this report. It turns out that pink isn't just the color for breast cancer awareness, but it's also the international color for anti-bullying initiatives. Organized by Equate, the growing annual Pink Friday Walkathon seeks to shed light on bullying in Kuwait while spreading education and awareness in order to curb 
and eventually end the negative behavior. This walkathon is to combat bullying. We've been doing this for four years. This is our fourth one. And it all, it's called Pink Friday, and it's based on a, um, an incident that happened in Canada with a kid who wore pink on a free dress day. And because of that, he got bullied for it, and two kids from his grade approached the principal and made every last Friday of the month Pink Friday. So everybody wore pink except for the bullies. So we took that concept, applied it here, and we're hoping to get a big turnout today just to take a stand against bullying. Over 3.2 million students are victims of bullying each year. Thousands are bullied right here in our own schools alone. And approximately 160,000 teens worldwide skip school every day because of bullying. International Stand Up to Bullying Day is a special semi-annual event in which participants sign and wear a pink pledge shirt to take a visible and public stance against bullying. The event takes place in schools, workplaces, and organizations in 25 countries around the globe. Ikwe is a community um, organization, so they help create equality in Kuwait. And I believe that, honestly, education is this basic form of equality. Everyone deserves the same level of education. And so for people not to be able to have it is very saddening because it's like the basic need of life. And so they can educate and equate, tie in together because we're both trying to raise awareness about such important causes, not just in Kuwait, but internationally. So we help each other out. So we just want to you know, bring awareness to them, make them, you know, realize that, hey, you know, you might think that it's harmless and, and, you know, you're just kidding and stuff, but really, you know, it is hurtful for people and it does lead to problems down the road, which is, you know, the main issue really. Like, you know, people might not, you know, think much of it now, but it, it does have underlying effects for when they grow up and stuff like that. And, it, you know, people really do take it to heart. So, so our main, our main, you know, what we really want to do is, is bring awareness to everyone, you know, that, okay, this is a real problem going on in Kuwait and, and and people should be tackling it head-on and, and bringing more focus to it. In 2012, around 200 people joined Equate in their walk against bullying in schools, and the number keeps rising as the organization hosts the event year after year. The organization hopes that through the walkathon, the topic will spread like wildfire, causing people to finally take a stance against bullies. Ideally, the awareness will move to action, the permanent change in ending bullying in Kuwait. Reporting for the English News. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. Well, with that, we conclude our news bulletin. Thank you for joining us. Have a pleasant time. I'm Maham Tawa. Before we go, we remind you once again of our main top stories. Have a pleasant time and good night. His Highness the Emir patronizes and attends the 14th edition of His Highness Sheikh Salem Al Ali Subah Informatics Award. The Minister of Interior is working on generating more cooperation on Arab and international levels to combat terrorism and destructive thoughts. Kuwait supports the Palestinian initiative of presenting the Arab draft resolution at the UN Security Council. And Kurdish forces launch an operation to retake the town of Sinjar in northwestern Iraq.